guys, so today I have another book review for you. It is a book review on the last two books in the Vampire Diaries original series, the one that was made in 1990. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. Um, this book, oh, wrong book. Um, this is the book cover. It has both The Fury and Dark Reunion in it. So I'm going to be reviewing both books in this uh, review. So when it comes time for the second book, I'll just say, oh, I'm reviewing this book. So if you wanted to just jump right that to right to that review, I'll have like an annotation somewhere on this video saying, oh, click on this and it'll take you right to the second part. Okay, so The Fury. It leaves off right where um, the struggle uh, left off. Um, Elena is dead, <laughs> um, and Stefan finds her body, um, at the Wickery Bridge. Uh, I think Bonnie helps Stefan find her, or something like that, or I'm not really sure exactly how they find her, but Stefan finds Bonnie, or finds her body, and Bonnie and Meredith are there also, so they know that Elena's dead. Um, and so Stefan leaves her by a tree and tells Bonnie and Meredith, oh, um, if I don't come back for her body, she'll be at this so-and-so spot or whatever. Because he's thinking about leaving town after this because there's nothing left for him here because Elena is dead. Um, so, Stefan leaves. Bonnie and Meredith leave. Um, what else did I say? Um, let me... I'm not sure if you remember how Elena dies. Um, there's this power that forces her from the Founders Day uh, event, I think not really, I think it's the parade or just something to do with the Founders Day. Um, it forces her from there because she's so upset about Stefan, or from, of, um, she's so upset with Damon and her aunt. She leaves to go find Stefan at the boarding house and this crazy power follows her and forces her onto the Wickery Bridge and she ends up, her car ends up going into the river and she can't get out and she drowns. That being said, after Stefan leaves, he finds, um, or Elena wakes up, she has this whole, like, thing in her head going on, like, oh, I need to go back to sleep, blah, 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 whatever. Um, Elena wakes up, and she has these thoughts running through her head. Oh my gosh, who, you know, there's this, she has this person in her running in her head, like, I need to help this person, this, I, if only I can get this much farther to him, and so she follows her, um, senses or whatever and it leads her to Stefan and Damon, Damon fighting and it's not what you think happens. She ends up um, being loyal to Damon and she is completely confused. She has no memory of what her past life was like um, because she's in transition into being a vampire and so um, sorry I just totally forgot about that you know, telling you that part. But this happens at the very beginning of the book. Her being a vampire isn't like, I didn't just spoil that for you. Um, but yeah, we find out she's a vampire, but all of her memories are erased, basically, from her past life, so she doesn't remember Stefan. All she knows is that Damon is the person that she's supposed to be with. She's completely loyal to Damon, and it, we find this out because, um, apparently, when she died, she had more of Damon's blood in her system than Stefan's, and so... That's why she's loyal to Damon right now. Um, so Damon's, you know, gloating and, like, you know, is loving this. And Stefan's really, really hurt. Doesn't really understand what's going on. And she doesn't have all of her memories back yet. So um, Damon puts her up in, because um, she's dead right now to, like, the town. The town thinks she's dead. Um, so Damon puts her up in this board, um, in a Lark Saltzman's attic, which I'm not sure if I've talked about him before. He is the vampire hunter that has come to town, and he is now the new history teacher. Um, so he, she is put up in his attic, and she sleeps for like four or five days or something like that. And she keeps telling Damon, oh, I need my diary, I need my diary. And um, so Damon gets her diary for her, and um, she reads it, and... All of her memories come back, and she remembers Stefan. She remembers how much she loved him and all of that stuff. So she's back with Stefan, and here comes the big... Um, that kind of happens in the beginning of the book, and then here comes the big... Uh, crap, what is the word? Uh, actual, like, problem with 
the story, like in the story. Um, you know how I talked about the big power that like ran her off the bridge? Well, something is going on with the town. All of the animals are like turning against the humans, which is really strange. They're like possessed or something like that, and they have no idea what's going on. So Elena tries to get Stefan and Damon to work together to help figure out what the problem is, and um, they do figure out what it is, and it's not what you think it is. Um, I'm not going to tell you what you think it is. If you would like to find out, you can watch the second half of this video for the next book. But that is basically what this book is about. Um, I told you what happens in the beginning, and then the second half is them trying to figure out what this power is that's in the town that's going, that's causing all these problems and making all the animals turn against the humans and all of this stuff that happens. Um, so yeah, that is the end of uh, the book review for the Fury. Now, if you would like to actually find out what happens at the end of the Fury, you can um, keep watching and I will tell you about Dark Reunion. Okay, so yeah, click this video if you don't want to hear about Dark Reunion or if you don't want to hear about what happens at the end of the Fury. Um, just click out right now. <laughs> okay, um, now the Dark Reunion. Um, it leaves off exactly where the Fury leaves off. Um, it's the fourth book in the original series. Well, first, let me tell you what happened at the end of uh, the Fury, just because I didn't talk about that in the beginning of this video, and I told you I would, and if you wanted to watch it. Um, so we find out that. Well, let me first say this. Um, Bonnie has have been having like these psychic visions or whatever, um, and. Whenever she like goes into her trance, somebody is talking through her mouth and it leads her to Honoria's, Honoria Fell's um, tomb and so that's where they go and they open up the tomb and they find out there's a stairway underneath the tomb and um, Damon, Stefan, and Elena end up going down into the tomb and, well, actually, no, they all go end up going into the tomb, and they find out that Honoria Fell was the one who was actually talking through Bonnie whenever she would go into her trances, and she was trying to help them, you know, figure out the whole mess with the, the big power and everything. And now, now that they know, you know, what's been going on, they, um, Honoria Fell says, says she's not going to be talking through Bonnie anymore, and that her job is done. Um... Once that happens, like, this crazy power starts to come in. I think, like, some animal attacks are coming, like a tiger or something happen, comes out of the, you know, the blue or something like that. And um, the th everybody leaves except for Damon, Stefan, and Elena. And we find out that this tiger um, is Catherine, who we thought was dead, but actually faked her death. So that is the person that has been creating all the craziness that's been going on in the town. Um, so yeah, we find out it's Catherine, and she like brutally, you know, like injures the three of them and everything like that. And um, so Elena does what she thinks she needs to do, and she pushes Catherine into this sliver of sunlight and holds her there until she dies. But because she holds, holds her there... Elena is also um, in the sun as well, so Elena actually dies as well. Um, we find that, that, out, that out at the end of the Fury. And right before she dies, she makes Stefan and Damon promise to take care of each other, and so that's the end of the Fury. Um, so yeah, the Dark Reunion leaves off exactly where the Fury left off. Um, well, kind of. No, wait, no, not really. There is, isn't isn't really, a, you know, a place that it actually leaves off. Well, Damon and Stefan are, um, they have left. They are not in, um, Fell's Church anymore. Um, the book kind of revolves around Bonnie. Um, she's kind of the main character in the book, and instead of Elena's diary, you know, entries, we have Bonnie's diary entries. Um, let's see here. So Bonnie has been having these like crazy nightmare vision, um, crazy nightmare visions where she sees Elena and she talks to Elena, and then all of a sudden things turn very frightening and scary, and like Elena turns into these crazy like weird things. I don't even know. Just really sickening things happen in her dreams. Um, after she's talked to Elena for a while, um, 
and she tells Bonnie and Meredith this, and um, they, you know they're not really they don't really know what to, to do about it. Um, and I think uh, what was I gonna say? Crap, totally forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yes, Bonnie, Meredith, and um, Caroline have a party for Meredith because because it is her birthday, and they invite um, Vicky and um, Sue. I think her name is. Um, so the five of them are having, you know, a party, and they decide to do a seance um, to try to contact um, Elena in, like, the other world, because that's where she is right now. Um, and when they go to get the, the seance board, something attacks Vicky in the closet, and she screams and whatever, and then they do the seance, and Elena is talking to them through the seance board, and she's telling them to get out, something is coming for them, get out, get out, get out, and she tells them, like, uh, what they need to do the spell to, like, get rid of this power. Well, actually, that happens in Bonnie's dreams, but, um, she tells them to get out, get out, get out, and then the lights turn off, and a bunch of craziness happens, and Sue ends up dying. She is, like, thrown out a window. We don't know how, because everything is just crazy is going on. Um, so, they have, um, they have a description, kind of, of who attacked them in the house, because whoever this person is grabbed Bonnie's hand while they were in there and so she felt the clammy like big-handed person that grabbed her arm and so then they do a summoning spell to summon um, Stefan and Damon back to Fells Church to help them out and Stefan finds out that the person in the house was Tyler um, Blackwood? No, Tyler Smallwood and I don't really want to give too much away right now, so if you don't want to know too much, click out now. Um, we find out that uh, Tyler is a werewolf, and um, he is actually working for somebody else. So he's not like the main, like big person in this book. He's he's working for another evil power who helped him turn into a werewolf. Um, I think that's basically all I want to tell you about it because. I don't want to give too much away and I don't want to give away the ending. I can tell you to click out right now if you don't want to hear the ending. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Click out right now if you don't want to hear the ending of the book. Okay, um, so what happens after that is um, they lure Tyler into the graveyard um, to, you know, torture him to like find out, to get information out of him to find out who actually is, you know, the bad person in the town. And they find out that Klaus the person that you find out turned Catherine in, oh, when she was like, you know, when turned Catherine into a vampire, she said that she killed Klaus, but actually Klaus is an original vampire, and he can't be killed unless he's killed by um, ash from a white, white ash wood? Yeah, white ash wood is the only way he can be, like, injured or killed or whatever. Um, so... They find out that the Wickery Bridge is made out of, I think, I think it's the Wickery Bridge. That's how it is in the show. Anyways, the Wickery Bridge is made out of the white ash, whatever. Oh no, there's some in the backyard of the old boarding house. Yeah, that's what it is. Sorry, I'm a little rusty. I haven't read, I read this book a long, t a while ago. Um, so yeah, they go to the meeting place where Klaus says that he wants to meet just Stefan. And instead, the three tag along, Matt, no, Matt, Meredith, and Bonnie tag along. Oh yeah, they meet at this place because um, Klaus has taken Caroline and um, Stefan feels it's his duty to, you know, get Caroline back. Um, so they meet there and, the, you know, this whole fight scene goes down and they get Caroline back, um, but Stefan is injured very, very badly. Um, and then Damon comes into the scene, you know, to rescue his brother, and he ends up stabbing Klaus, and Klaus runs off into the forest, and, um, Elena calls out for, er, Bonnie calls out for Elena because Stefan is dying, and like some other people get injured, I think Matt gets injured too, but they call out for, um, Bonnie calls out for Elena, and all these ghostly figures start showing up and then there's Elena at the at the very front lines 
um, kind of like this otherworldly ghostly figure. And all the ghosts are the, um, the, like, Civil War, um, um, the people that died in the Civil War at this, at Fell's Church. Um, and they take Klaus with them. I'm not really sure how. It doesn't explain how. It just magic, I guess. And so Klaus is gone. He they took him into the other world. And um not Elena goes around and kisses all the injured people and they become magically not injured anymore. Um and then somehow Elena gets another chance at life and she comes back to life. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the end of the book. Somehow she comes back to life, but um, Elena is much, much better in these two books. She is a much different person. She cares about her friends. She cares about Damon. She's very unselfish. Um, yeah, she's just a completely different person. And I think all the things that she's gone through kind of change her, her priorities and what, um is important to her. She realizes that the selfish things that she, you know, did before aren't important anymore. What's really important are friends and family and doing the right thing and she's all about protecting the town now. And it's just she's completely done like a 180. So, I'm really happy about that. Um I am actually reading the next book in the series which is um Dark Reunion. I'm, oh, it's way over there. I don't feel like grabbing it, but it's Dark Reunion, and so that is the next book you will get a review on. Um, it's kind of taking me a long time to read just because I'm not really sure how I feel about this series. It's just kind of like blah to me. Like, it's okay. Like, I'm, I'm gonna read it because I have all the books, but they're just not as interesting as something like The Hunger Games or... The Maze Runner, which I'm in love with, or just, you know, some of the other books I've read, I'm like, oh my gosh, I read, I read The Hunger Games in one night, I stayed up all night reading it, I read the series in like a week, I was just like, and this is as soon as each of the books came out, I was just like, I had to read all of them, and this series has taken me like, the book I'm reading right now, I think I've been reading it for like 20 days, and I'm not even halfway through it yet, which I should be. But, um, I'm not. <laughs> so yeah, that's the end of the series. I will have a comparison video between the series and, um, the TV show. That will be coming up next. Um, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, that is everything. Leave a comment below telling me how you like these books if you've read them before. Or if you watch the TV show, how you like the TV show. Um... Leave a, yeah, leave a comment below also telling me what books I should read because I'm always open to new suggestions. I have a huge library of books right here, here, but um, I'm always looking for new books to read. And yeah, go check out my channel and please, please, please subscribe. And that is it. Okay, so I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!